Hello everybody, Louis here and let's talk C Sharp. So today I want to talk to you guys about named constants. Um, so what are constants? Well, my answer to that is a constant is anything that's not a variable. And a variable is anything that's not constant. So it is very easy to work with constants in C Sharp. So we already know how to declare variables. So let's go ahead and, and declare a variable here. And if you've watched my previous videos, you know that here is where the magic happens. Happy face. All right. So we already know how to declare variables, right? So if I want to declare, say, a variable called tax, I can just declare a double tax is equal to 0 0.15 and 0 0.15 is equal to 15 percent all right so this is not a math class but you know that that's that's how this works all right that's how we represent a percentage in decimals so the problem with that is say that i'm working on an application that i have to maybe collect some inputs from the user and then you know do some math um if this tax variable is not a constant then there is a chance that somewhere in my code I will kind of override this value, right? Um, and, you know, stuff go wrong, right? So I, I am actually allowed to do something like tax equals 1, right? And all of a sudden I'm, I'm charging 100% in tax, which is not good. So... The only reason why this is possible is because this tax variable is not declared as a constant, right? So let's go ahead and, and make this a constant. So how, how can I go about doing that? It's very simple. Just right before the data type, just include the keyword const, okay? And now my tax is a constant. And you can see that if I try to reassign a value to it, you're going to get an error. Right, and this error essentially exists because you have declared tax variable as a constant, so it's not really a variable anymore, it's a constant, and you're trying to reassign a value to that um, constant, right? So this is illegal. Um, so Visual Studio won't let you do that. You're gonna get a compilation error uh, if you try to compile this code. Um, so things just won't work very well for you if that's what you're trying to do. And sometimes this is exactly what you want. You, you wanna prevent errors. Uh, you, wanna, you wanna make sure that users or developers won't do anything that they're not supposed to. Um, so this const keyword is one of the mechanisms that you have for that. So let's work on an example here real quick. Um, let's say that, let's work on an exercise. Write a console application that calculates the final sales price for a purchase. The user should input the number of items he or she is purchasing and the price. The program should collect the input and do the necessary calculations. Finally, displaying the final price which is equal to, and I'm gonna just give you the formula here, final price equals number of items times price times one plus tax. Okay, so I'm gonna give you the formula here. So if you wanna work on this exercise, just pause this video right now Take a couple of minutes to, to solve this. This is very straightforward. Uh, and whenever you're done, just click play and we're gonna solve it together. All right, so let's let's work on this problem. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, let's start from scratch, okay? So I'm, I'm gonna follow the, uh, the kind of the, uh, the sequence of steps that will help you solve any kind of problem of this type. 
okay so we're gonna say that step one is declare variables okay so what are the variables I'm gonna need here maybe I'm gonna need a double for the price maybe I am going to need an integer for quantity maybe I want to do a double for total and maybe I want a constant right so tax is something that doesn't matter what the user types in it will always be the same value right and it should remain the same value so I'm gonna go ahead and say const double tax equals 0 0.15 okay now th there are some different conventions when it comes to to naming constant variables it's kind of weird to say constant variables but you know some users like to do something like you know do it all uppercase like tax I don't know tax amount you know whatever it is right um so this is this is really up to you it really depends on on what kind of convention you you adhere to uh, i've seen people do it in many different ways so me i'm just gonna do it all over case or pascal case uh just as i've done with the other variables as well so that was step one now let's take a look at step two which is going to be what yep you got it collect inputs so from here I'm gonna do a console right line because I have to let the user know that I'm expecting them to you know input something so I'm gonna say please input the number of items right and I already know what to do from here right so I know the quantity variable is going to be here what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do int dot parse console dot read line there we go I got it now this is not the only thing that I have to collect from the user I also have to collect the price value so please input the price and then price is equal to and now that's gonna be a double so double dot parse console read line all right so I guess that's that's pretty much it so let's go to the next step which is step three which is going to be my actual algorithm So from here, what I'm going to do, that, that's a very simple calculation because you already have the formula, right? So you don't have to think about that. So if you're not good with math and you don't know why I have to do, you know, one plus tax in here, you know, that again, this is not a math class. So I'm, I'm just giving you the formula and, you know, all you have to do is implement the code. So I'm going to say that total is equal to number of items which is my quantity variable times price which is my price variable times and then I have to use the brackets here and I have to do one plus tax and the only reason why this formula is so simple is because I am assuming that the tax variable is a decimal right so it's not 15 for 15 percent it's actually 0 0.15 so that makes my life a lot easier uh, so yeah so there you go so I do have my total here uh, it is being calculated properly so I can safely go to the next step which is step 4 display results and for that it's going to be very simple I can just use my interpolated strings I, I always encourage you guys to use interpolated strings as well because you know it's a more modern approach it's um, a smarter approach as well um, and it's mo way more readable 
So I'm going to say something like the total is, and then I'm going to throw in my placeholder in here, and my placeholder is going to be total. And there we go. I'm just displaying this to my user, okay? Now, keep in mind that the total, this represents a currency value. Yep, you got it, currency value. So I can use one of my string formatters to actually auto automatically format this value as a currency for me. So I can just go ahead and say colon C, and there you go, it's done, right? So let's run this, let's see what I, what I get. Okay, uh, the number of items, let's say, let's say um, I'm getting five items and they're all $20 each. Okay, so my total is $115. Awesome, that's exactly what I was looking for. Uh, so five times 20 is 100 and my tax is 15%. So 15% of 100 is 15. Yeah, you got it, 15. So, cool. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to cover in this video as well is that you can see that, you know, the, uh, I'm actually displaying the result right away, right? So that there's no breathing space in between the, uh, you know, the user, the last user input and the actual result, right? So maybe I want to fix that. Maybe I want to add some breathing space and, you know, give the user a bit of a, a, a more pleasant experience. So how do I add a new line here right before this uh this is there are a couple of ways to do that so i can just safely just do another console right line and that gives me the exact output that i'm looking for however there's a bit of a shorthand that i can use here so i can just do backslash n right and you can see that visual studio actually changes color i hope you guys can see that um but it becomes a little orangey. So the thing is, it recognizes the forward slash as a kind of an escape character, and then the this whole thing, the backslash n, represents a line break. Okay, so I'm kind of adding a line break to the beginning of the uh, of my string. So if I run this again, and I'm just going to input the same values. Uh, let's say it's five items and twenty dollars each. See, I got an extra line here. I have, I have some breathing space now, which is good. So, you know, uh, whenever you guys have to add a line break, and, you know, we can do this in, in many different occasions, but, you know, we can safely use the backslash N for that. Um, and you, you can essentially do it anywhere. So if I wanted to do, it, to do it here, I could just insert a backslash N in there. And if I do Control F5 again, Number of items is five. The price is 20. I get the output that I'm looking for, okay? So this is what I had for this video. I hope you guys learned something new and I'll see you next time. Cheers.